Abby. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, we're just really interested in hearing uh, more about this incredible uh, result that you got at the St. Petersburg Heli Hansen Sailing World Regatta. Uh, you got second by one point, and you were <laughs> sailing incredibly fast. What we'd love to know is uh, how did you come together as a team? Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what experience you've had together and how you grew uh, in this in this uh, regatta, this event. And then tell us what made you go so fast? Um, how did you uh, perform so well out there in the Nogus 15? So um, my name is Abby Brown. I grew up sailing on the west coast of Canada, so um, all around like Vancouver and Vancouver Island. Um, I absolutely love it. And then I moved out to um, Ontario, where I currently am, doing a bunch of college sailing and just getting back into some of the bigger boats too. And now the Melge is 15 as well, and <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I just... Um, wh wh which, uh, which boats have you been in most often? And um, So I did, I started out in like just like all of the keel boats, and then um, I raced 420s for a few years. And then I hopped into a 29er and I did that all the way up until I graduated high school. And then in college, I'm back to 420s and then um, like Melge's 24s and J70s, a little bit of J80s. And, wow, yeah. a wide, wide uh, spectrum of uh, boats. Yeah. And Mike, how about you? Yeah, uh, I think uh, most people know me. I, I, grew, I started sailing in, um, uh, in Rhode Island. Grew up when I was 12 years old. And my, uh, my first racing instructor's boat name was Electric Pickle, which my brother bought the Sunfish, but it had the good dagger board. So I went and took that um, and grew up doing the bow with my dad. You know, you always sail with your dad and we needed 38 feet of boat in between us to keep us from arguing, which is yeah. typical. From there, uh, yeah, University of Rhode Island, you know, five years. Some of the greatest mentoring from guys like Tom Burnham and John Ziskind about how the bow man should be the second best tactician on the planet, you know, and combine dinghy sailing with that. And, um, you know, throughout my whole life, sailing has always made me feel the best. I've been socially a bit challenged, as everybody knows, and when you're, it creates the skills, you know, it, it just boosts an incredible level of confidence, you know. Right. And it's really carried forward. And then after that, five years in Germany, then to Chicago, where ever been able to get on boats that have made me better, and they just keep getting better, better, better. And wow. that's been far 40s, J111s, Vanguard 15s, FJs, 420s, not good in 420s ever. Did a ton of sunfish sailing, yeah. you know, and then just now, just ever on the hunt for mentors, you know. And now you're the brains behind the electric pickle racing team, <laughs> which seems to have a lot of participants. Yes, the electric pickle is, um, it, is, uh, it is a junior sailing symbol, and it is all of us in junior sailing that really, it melds, you know, I have an engineering degree, but I'm even brained. So it, create, it, it melds creativity, you know, art, you know, and that science right. is kind of an explanation with sailing. And um, elect, that's what Electric Pickle is all about. Electric Pickle is about helping people get better, you know. And now, to my absolute delight, that Abby turned out to be 10 times better sailor yeah. than I ever thought she was, yeah. you know. And it's, um, yeah, Electric Pickle is about motivation, you know, the new, it's named Electric Pickle Experience. You know, it's experiences that make life worthwhile as my dad and that's what the whole thing is founded on and that's what the energy is what attracts people to it and it's just been a ride that just puts a huge smile on my face this life is better 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 ever every time well sozing.com really was originated around the concept <clears throat> of sailors helping sailors race smarter and faster mm -hmm. and it, it sprung from this idea that after a big race you meet at a bar or whatever and you chat about well, man you really got me at that gate what were you doing you know what did I do wrong and yeah you share these ideas so it's really incredibly nice that, that you can sit down with us and share some of your expertise and tell us what you did um, talk through uh, how you gelled as a team what sort of things did it take for you to kind of get your your uh, thing synced up for this event yeah well, we'll go ladies first well um, I think the big thing when you start out with like a new crew member or new skipper is like you really don't know them um, you don't know like what their capability is and you have to have a lot of faith going into it um, because it, everything is unknown so um, the first day we got out we did about an hour practice on Thursday and we were just kind of like trying to figure each other out like what calls do we like like when I say like we're tacking do you want like a 3-2-1 countdown or do you just want like a we should tack soon 
trying to figure out like all the calls and all that kind of stuff first and then it's it really just comes down to having confidence in each other and if um, earning it yeah yeah and like you have to earn it um and <clears throat> prove to yourself as well as your sailing partner that um you can do it and for me I've always struggled with like making tactic calls because I'm always like well what if I'm wrong like what if what if this isn't the right call um <laughs> yeah. and it really for me personally it was amazing that Mike just like he had the confidence in me and the faith in me that I was making the right call and that made me more confident and me more like I had faith in myself then because I knew like okay like if he yeah. believes in me and he believes that I'm making the right call then like I'm also going to believe that I'm making the right call. And I think yeah. that's really how we gel, just like having faith in each other and like boosting each other's confidence and just like supporting each other through the learning process. Absolutely, yeah, you, um, you basically, a great way to sum up what electric pickle and junior sailing is all about. Because like it's, um, it's, not, it's not that, I mean, it's one thing that you had faith, but you earned the faith because you started to sail better. Because as soon as we started to get on the step and that breakaway speed and we broke a plateau together, like something clicked. And it's, you have a huge confidence booster for me. Like I personally react a lot to that, you know, a sort of a spectrum type of mind. There's like lead with love or people need to have faith and it just, Electric Pickle program just boosts me. And even you, Rob, interviewing us just makes me light up like a sun. <laughs> and, to, and to race with Abby, it's just like, um, your energy, you know, and it's like, but it's faith rewarded, you know, really in that I, if you're fast, then tactics gets easy for one, but I knew you're a 29er sailor, but the technique was something at 110 pounds to pull us on the step and keep us jumping on waves, doing 13-7 the whole time, which, you know, is, you know, you're sailing fast, the boat's getting a little bit, you know, that we're opening the vang up, you know, as doing, to applying eddies lessons, the helm is getting neutral as you heal, you know, when you, when you, and, that, and the, one of the biggest things is when, you know, we have big waves about this tall and the wave starts coming and you're kind of tempted to drive down. And from my last crew, Emily Shanley Roberts, you know, I definitely got uh, corrected by her. It was my coach and applied these lessons. And so when the wave comes, we kind of go up. And what did you do? You kind of just threw your shoulders down and pumped. And we shot down the wave like a surfboard. We didn't hit any waves this weekend. And before you knew it, we sailed straight through the middle of the heat, lower, faster, you know, speed equals speed, the quote Eddie Cox, and which is classic 29er. And wouldn't you know it, the Melgus 15 and the, and the 29er are extraordinarily similar boats. I mean, the 15 is a, you know, like a 29er is for Abby. Melgus 15 is for like you and me, you know, like that's their, their stable, their stable like 29er like, you know, but I wouldn't, there's differences, all right. 29er is like a knife, right? It's a skiff, yeah. Or what, as you had said, in a Melgus 15, you know, you make a mistake, it's okay. In a 29er, you're upside down. You messed that up. So, yeah, and I mean, it was, uh, it was really uh, just that awesome experience of, you know, when with crew work, when one impresses the other. You know, like at first, we're going. And I was very much in control, you know, very much in charge of what to do. And uh, in the morning over Jeep Trim, we kind of argued a little bit. But I was a little bit uncertain of like I didn't understand why to disagree with somebody who's so learned of a sailor you know it's like that's all well and good we're sailing co-ed but I'm after the skill set you know that's to be very very clear about that and um so over though so as as things developed the next day you know we kind of we could not go up wind to save our lives turns out you know bow down by two degrees of everyone else is correct because you sail around people but the next day, Abby wanted, you know, we need to, let's go jib forward, you know, and you were the, you're, there was an inflection in your voice that you were starting to feel a little bit annoyed, and I'm kind of, teamwork is better. Can you dig into jib forward? Sure, yes, we will, absolutely. Yeah, and so here's, here's where the good part of the jib forward comes. Turns out Abby was correct. Our lead, we were back, we were two holes showing. We had the jib way open, and had I been on, on Friday, remember, to trim the boat flat, it would have been a low mode that could have worked, but without that, so come day two, it's still windy, but Abby moves the jib forward. What you went three holes or four showing you wanted, I right? I think we started with three, and three. then, we, and then right. we went. We wound up to four as like the wind mm -hmm. died a little bit and the waves got bigger. Yeah, and just magically, when the jib is forward and you see the round, you see the rounded foot, and I look up through the telltale window, through the main window, to make sure we got full flow. 
if I feel if the jib's hard, you know, I just look up there, look at the at the atlas to see what the target speed is like. Check the tar check the angle. Very very useful device, by the way. I was wrong. The, the Karos atlas. The atlas. Too. Yeah, we'll talk about the atlas too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the atlas eye. Yeah, and um, you know, it's um, so all of a sudden you feel the bow just the boat heads up. You're not driving into people now. It just picked the bow up, and it's a lot sort of like in haul, but it's that powerful shape that makes the boat go forward faster, which generates more powerful lift. So it's not a matter of driving up, it's balance of power, you know, that I believe that uh, drives the boat forward. And Abby, you suggested moving it forward. What were the clues that caused you to think that was the right thing to do? Yep. I was really struggling with it on the first day because we were so overpowered because we were sailing so much lighter than everyone else, so we couldn't keep the boat flat. So moving that car back was a way of like opening up the leech of the sail and really like spilling some power yeah, in hopes we of like being able to get us flatter and depower us a little bit. But the problem with that is it was so wavy because we were fighting so much current all weekend that we didn't have the power to get through the waves and we didn't have a way mm. to really like get up to speed to then be able to like sail the boat properly. Yep. Um, so then on day two, it was still pretty windy and I was like, you know what, like yesterday didn't work. We tried that, it didn't work. We know it didn't work, so let's try something different. And so that's where it kind of came from. Like we, we tried one thing, it was unsuccessful, so we, we tried another thing. And it was really just like being able to have the extra power in the jib yeah. to drive our bow down and get us through those waves made a huge difference for the right. wind. Yeah, so, the, so when you ask about the clues, that's a great question because that's what I'm talking about is touch in the dinghy. To use numbers requires touch. And I know that I should feel the boat drive up. Abby's like, I think we're not powerful enough in the jib. The bow, we're missing power. And so we should have more power. And um, okay, so we'll do more power. And that, okay, seems good. But getting back, it's the trust first that enables the dialogue that leads to this, where we do it and try it. And that I disagree, and I have far more experience, but I wasn't sure about, I understood, I was uncomfortable with the disagreement, you know, is it so... Sure enough, I'm like, you know, actually, I think that let's, it's your, so then you go back to separation of powers. I drive, you race. So you want to do that, Abby? All right, let's do that. And it was right. It was completely right. And, you know, and sure enough, bam, there comes the first shot of when I get impressed. Like, holy shit, you're a lot better sailor than I ever thought you might be. So now I calm down. I don't do any of this. Heads down, drive. And next thing you know, we, we hit no more waves. And when we were getting killed upwind, we became super dominant upwind. And then comes another huge part about what's great about sailing with someone with a personality like Abby. She's like, you are like a, what'd you say? A magic, a magic driver through the waves. Your ability oh to gosh. not slow yeah. down through the waves is unbelievable. The exhilaration. And, it, and it, it, what happens is it's one thing to know something, but it's first and foremost to put your best foot forward. That's like the biggest part of, you know, the team motivation. Sail with people that do impress you. Like it's not enough to say skipper shut up you have to uh, take away the reasons to worry my reasons for worrying were taken away one by one so not yeah. everybody is sailing with you know champion right crews etc this is the next there point are a couple of things that you were uh, that you said was one is communication yeah. yeah trust or no trust yes if you if you have a crew that has some ideas and you yes. feel like you're struggling well, yep. it makes a lot of sense to, to take in some in insights from who you have Mm -hmm. and, and, to, and to listen openly and try to understand, okay, what, what does she see that I don't see because she has her hand on the jib sheet. She, yeah. she is closer to that sail. She can sort of get a sense of what's going on. Yeah. And it sound, it's like whatever she a, says. As a uh. most time skipper, um, it's important to be able to delegate, you know, to not sit there and say, I have to think it all out. Right, yeah, yeah. To share that. Right. And you hope to build trust and you hope to build confidence. You know, like I'm in a team where we're trying to right. make massive Yeah, we're working together. Learning, yeah, I know you're right? doing real well. And you know? so I have to, both of us have to be open to the idea that we don't have it all figured out. And so yeah. what's interesting is, you know, the trust makes a ton of sense, but the listening almost sounds like the precursor to trust. Exactly. Quite yeah. precisely, because no matter if you're fast, speed kills. And I already know that I personally know from sailing with Emily last year, I know how to be fast. And so, and I know that you're a 29er sailor. And it's one thing, like, you know, take like you and Muzz. Like, I mean, it's like take seriously whatever one says, but just the whole, the simple, you needn't be great at sailing. You need but to see 
the principle of the teamwork where you get each other's minds going. Like sailing is built, dinghies are built, and what makes a milk as beautiful is it just, it's built on how do you feel. And I just told you, you look up at the window and you see, is that telltale still kind of up, wound in the jib, the jib's pulling forward. I'm like, you know, you know it's happening, right? And you just now have that, that moment and it gets both of your brains learning quickly, which is your, your earlier comment was fantastic about the regatta party. The most fulfilling thing about sailing is getting better at something and the, 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 uh, that you see yourself getting better and the dinghies are great for that, you know? And, um, well, and the sharing, I think the yeah, big, and the the big point I would say yeah. is that uh, most sailors that I've experienced are very open about sharing. Everyone. Because, yes. you know, if I give you my magic sauce about how to, how to sail better, the likelihood that you're going to suddenly incorporate that into your sailing and, and beat me is pretty low. But also, I think sailors like competition. Yeah. Most racing sailors like to have yeah. good competition. So they're, they're like, oh, yeah, well, here's what you did wrong. And, or here's what I think you might have been doing wrong. You should think about this. You should try something. And, then, and so that sharing is just phenomenal. You've talked about that sharing with, within the hull, right, between the crew members. And there's also that sharing between competitors helping people get better. It is, yeah. Awesome. There's Although, a lot of conversations in between the races and stuff, like us with other boats and just like other boats with other boats that you kind of picked up on. And it was like, hey, like how many holes are showing? Or like, hey, what? what's your rig at? Or like, hey, what's your vang at? And all that kind of stuff. And I know that a lot from dinghy sailing in the past. Like we would get out on the water and we would do a tune-up. And whether I was tuning up with people from my team or that I was racing against or people from other teams that I was racing against. Like, we were always sharing knowledge because, like, the only way for you to get better is if your competition is also getting better because that's going to push you to keep learning and keep doing better. But if you're always at the top of the fleet and there's no one pushing you to get better, it's a lot harder for you to have, like, motivation within yourself to get better if you're already, like, sailing at a level that makes you think that you're the best in the fleet. But if you're fleet is all racing at the same level I find that that's when I learn the most because it's like how do I get yeah. better within this group and everyone's just trying to get better so it's awesome to bounce ideas off of each other yeah so the big we're just sailing so fast moment yes. was it the jib what what is the moment where you just felt because we we saw you just ripping down wind gone yeah just gone it was incredible <laughs> a little bit started, a little freaky <laughs> what what was the aha insight what was the thing that happened that made you guys go oh this is working what 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 happened what were you doing i think uh, like i guess we can go uh from back of the boat forward this time and uh the thing really was the wave jumping and like you know learning to keep the vang off and i mean through the video i remember brad funk saying like dude you got to hike harder and keep the boom over the back of the boat to open the, the top, so which lets you head up. And it was the point where I wasn't chasing the waves low, I just kind of went up and the boat loaded up and we rocketed and I was like, if I didn't know any better, I would think this heading up and we'd head up, we'd go up, it's like hit and hold, just wait and then boom, and then all of a sudden, after that your confidence goes up and it's now a truth, it's a simple truth. And um, you know the feel and we run straight into you and if you're in the way we just trace through a jive nice and smooth and with Abby saying, like, you are a magic driver in the waves, that just makes me really, you start to trust yourself. You know, and that, that, that's the aha moment where we blast. And then what was it? Uh, and then as we went from, like, mid-fleet to 100 yards ahead, is that what? Not the turtle and not seeing the sea turtle. But, but, yeah. then, but, then, uh, but before that, Abby turns to me and go, Abby turns to me. I, would, I mean, literally, probably shouldn't say this, but she turns to me and she's like, oh, my God, look at, look at where we are. Look back. And I go... Would it be bad to take a camera selfie? She's like, no. And I'm like, sorry. Yeah, and, uh, but then. Yeah, it wouldn't have surprised me. Yeah, it was like it says, but it's a, we have a lot of fun laughing, but when you're doing well, you start laughing. Right. Laughing is fast. Or one of my great mentors, um, Jimmy Elvart, you know, he said, like, you know, what should be happening is you should be having a good time, enjoying, and, you know, in the mentality, though, that you race the boat. We sail well. You know, if we do well and the results, like, it's fine. It's an exhilarating weekend. We got really close to Lori Stout. So although sharing is good, I kind of didn't want to on the morning of Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> but I knew that you have to. Well, but if, yeah. if on Sunday we would have been able to finish up the race, you might have been able to. Yeah, we had, we had that new yeah. gear, and sure enough, Abby's like, why don't we go one more hole forward? I'm like, that seems aggressive. But all right, you know, hey, you know, it's, it's, but then there's like, you know, also you have to let people do their job, and people have to do their job. All gears must turn. 
because if all are turning, the one gear not turning is where you have an immediate root cause analysis to see what's wrong. And that's the other thing that, you know, you have to help each other, not upset each other by being open to doing well and not having an ego about it or wanting to be seen, but getting off on, you know, what was it, uh, Goethe wrote in Faust, like people want, want knowledge and love and you want to learn something when you truly do learn something. And we did learn and it really, it really straddled us forward. So it was that wave jumping aha moment for me. I don't know, what would you say was when you got it? Wow, it was fun. <laughs> it's hard to like think about it and not <laughs> smile. Um, I like when you smile. It's, it's, I think, it's adorable. <laughs> I think the big thing for me was like, it was a big confidence boost because like sailing upwind in that boat, it's a lot like there's jib cars and there's no windward sheeting and 29ers have a self-tacking jib. So I don't even touch the jib on the upwinds on that oh, boat. I have the main oh. sheet in my hand. So like it's that boat was a lot different than dinghies that I had sailed on the upwinds and then when we went downwind it was a lot like a 29er not like it's still not the same but it was it felt a lot more familiar to me and just being able to be like oh I know how to do this like I've done this before I know I know what to do um, yeah, you do. and for me I am I'm small I am maybe 110 pounds um, but same height as me yeah so it takes a lot like I can't in that kind of breeze that we had on sa Friday and Saturday what, 15 to 20 yeah 15, 15 to too much man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 15 20, four races um, you're like it, I can't trim that kite with my arms so I have to use my entire upper body and that really ends up helping because as I'm trimming with my body when it comes in I'm leaning out we're driving down and then like when I'm coming in to like ease it it's because like it's getting lighter and we don't need all that weight out. So it ends up working out a lot better because I need to use my body to trim the kite. So my body is moving us and it's becoming beneficial. So I feel like in a way, me being very light helped us out a lot on the downwinds because I was a lot more active um, with yeah. moving my body as well as trimming the kite. And having us be lighter also allowed us to sail on the step planing a lot lower than the other boats because we could get onto it that much faster and we could hold it that much lower because we didn't have as much weight in our boat. Were there some tight critical moments in in the uh, racing where you kind of got in a jam or you had some, you know, some All tactics? And uh, can you think of like the top situation? What I'm trying to get at is the mentality of running into, because, you know, as Dave Dellenbaugh famously says, strategy is the route you would take if nobody was out there with you. And right. tactics are what you do when somebody gets in the way of your strategy. Or determine your own destiny is what you hear, what the, the, the exact so translation of that don't let somebody pull you into their tactics. You oh. want to try to get back to your strategy. So, okay, but, but it's a reality. We're sailing against other boats. Mm -hmm. You encounter some situation. Can each of you recount one moment where... You, and I'm not talking about where your crew or, you know, yeah, other, sure. this is your own personal journey where you ran into something and then maybe you had to work it out as a team, but you were like, okay, this is the one where I felt challenged to have to think through, okay, what do we need to do and how did you figure out the best course of action? Well, uh, I think, uh, what was the time when I was like, everyone's hiking, I'm like, except for you, and you're like, I'm hiking, and I'm like, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it was, I don't know, we, um, we went out on Friday and we just, what did you do, the, the, the drill you do with your kids, three, five, seven, and we just banged out a bunch of tacks and we had what, on, explain I, that, three, five, seven. So, um, yeah. when, when I, I'm a big race team coach, I coach a lot of kids like all the way up, like learn to sail and then try and get them into Which regattas. Um, mostly 420s. Okay, um, and in, in Canada? Yeah, Canada. so yeah, um, at Port Dover Yacht Club, it's a little cottage okay. club kind of thing on Lake yeah. Erie. Um, so I coach them from like, at that club, I think we start at seven, and then just kind of getting them all the way up through, and then they're like 18, and they want to move on to a race team, and we don't have a full-blown race team, but like I have enough to get them up and get them through like their first two or three regattas, and then yeah. I send them off to someone with a bigger budget and a bigger team that can kind of like coach them through the rest of the year. Um, but a big one is whenever I get a new team together, and they're in the boat, um, 
I do this three five seven drill, and it's a really common one in Canada. I'm sure everyone uses it down here. It might just be a different name. Not everyone. But so there's <laughs> there's a windward leeward, and on the first one you do three tacks and one jibe, and then you do it again, and you do five tacks and three jibes, and then you do seven tacks and five jibes, and I just make them keep going until they're they're just like not not sailing anymore. They're just tacking so much because that is when you're communicating the most. I find that when new teams get yeah. together and they're just sailing in a straight line, there's a lot less communication going on. But if they're, go if they're moving through a movement, like a tack or a jibe or a hoist or a fairway or a douse or whatever, there's a lot more communication and they get comfortable communicating with each other so that when they do start to sail in a straight line, they can keep up their communication. It's just not the same communication that you use through Even tap. the nonverbal, it would seem like yeah. just going through that motion so often, you really don't have to say this, that, that. You, yeah. you get beyond the... Exactly, yeah. And you start yeah. to work through oh, the boat as a team. Like, we, when we first got out on the boat and we were tacking, our roll tacks were okay, hmm. but we weren't... It was our first time together. We, yeah. hadn't, we hadn't figured it out. We hadn't figured each other out. And by... And even on Friday, we were still, we were a little bit better, and we were watching each other, but we had to watch each other to make sure that we were moving as a team. And when Saturday rolled around, I'm sure you feel the same way, mm. I didn't really have to, like, look back. I just knew that we were moving through the boat together as a team. So I was following you. Exactly, I can yeah. see you, you know. And that, I think that was a big help, just, like, being able to go through the process of like all of those movements a bunch of times together and working out like what we need to do to get through the boat as a team. Yeah, that's like the 357 is like, that's gotta be, everybody has to use that. I'm just kind of the one who's like, hmm, it makes you late to the party, but I'm, I'm game. Cause what, what did we do? 14 tacks, you know, no spinnaker to get the boat handling down. And it's like, that sounds like something a college sailing would do. And what did we do? We did 35711. Yeah. Or just no without warning, you know, and we just uh, we went into the flat water. And so the original question of what some situations, what do we we double tacked up onto the ley line? You know, we yeah. got, we were kind of a little bit tight and there was space. She's like, taste. I'm like, OK, tack, 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 boom. And I mean, you know, I pushed too. at first. I pushed you hard on Friday was I was definitely pushing hard. And then on okay, Saturday, you're all taxing, you're taxing smooth or what? well, pushing, uh, pushing you hard to trim. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I'll, 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 you know, I pound the deck with my fist in a little bit, mm -hmm. but but it's like. But that's not a big deal, you know, because just an experienced crew just, just doesn't, ex knows not to respond, you know, that just, if you skip her waves a baby rattle, it's a baby rattle rule. Like, you get, I get to cry at the wine, but not, only for a couple seconds, you know, it's not a personal shot. And, and then I remember why she's being Canadian, she's so polite, <laughs> she's so, so sweet. We're going downwind and she goes, could I get a trim, please? And I'm like, of course. And I go, you know, like that. And you're like, thanks. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Well done, Abby. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and the other thing that happened was Saturday, we hiked super hard. My shoulder, that's the day my shoulder's below the rail. And I really realized how, how hard it was until I tried to run up the stairs in, in St. Pete. Yeah. And I tripped up the stairs because my legs weren't lifting anymore. But um, yeah, so we... So, Abby, what would your tactical, like, uh, oh, we got... We got ourselves in a jam, and what did you think you... Oh, the did? one, I'm not sure if this oh, the one is start. quite right. Oh, yeah, there was, so... Oops, well, we, we were both on board with that one, Yeah, so. there's there's <laughs> two. So um, on Saturday, um, yeah. at the start, they had adjusted the entire course except for the pin end of the start line, and they had shifted everything, <laughs> so the boat was incredibly favored Oops. like a terrifyingly amount of favored and i was like okay like we have to start in the boat which you very smartly kept from me otherwise i would get the luxury <laughs> um but the problem was is we were so set up at the boat i didn't realize that there was a huge puff at the pin so we started right. we started in a lot less breeze than the rest of the fleet because i was like i was so focused on the boat being so favored that I didn't realize that there was so much more pressure at the other side of the course. And at that point, the pressure was more favored than the boat. Mm. And so we, we started at the boat. We did okay off the start line. I wouldn't say we won it, but we did, we did all right. And we tacked out. And we... <laughs> all of the J24s that were on our course oh, were rounding God. the leeward mark at that point. And what do so I we say? Are now, Can you tack? <laughs> 
We are now on the right side of the course, under, I don't know how many J24s there were, like three oh, or four Oh, we were J24s. under J24s, Flying Dutchman, a lot of Melgas 15s. Yeah. We spent yeah. some time, we were like, we're going right. Oh, wow. Are those Everyone guys, what leg are those guys right, on? Right Is it the second me. leg? <laughs> but and you're so had... quick off the wind, you don't care, you know what I mean? So how'd you get out of it? So um, we actually... Fast. Our, our, J, our J24 friends helped us out a lot with that yeah, one because the there was another uh, boat on our sunrise. hip. And so we didn't have a spot to tack. So we very politely asked them if they would tack. Yeah. And they tacked for us. And it was amazing. That and was that's nice. another thing. And then we thanked them on the yeah. way downwind, going fast. And that was, like, that's another thing about sailing, right? Is they aren't racing against us. They're racing against their fleet. So they don't want to try and screw us over. That doesn't benefit them at all. Exactly. So they were amazing. And they helped us tack. And I got distracted by a sea turtle, but... Um. Oh, that was, no, that was on the second beat when we were doing really well. Oh, okay. Because, you know, what we had done was we went out to the right, and actually we went right, and the two of us were now kind of laughing, like, you know, this is sweet. <laughs> I'm like, wow, look at all the milgies. No one would say hi to us either. It was a bummer. But, we, you know, it was interesting. We did, we had an aha moment there that was actually confirmed later that, see, we're these other guys, and we're sailing under, and I'm like, well, we cannot point, you know, and... Um, but we kind of sailed out from under. And sure enough, Eddie's like, yeah, I sailed about on him and go. We went around them. And then we ended up haphazardly into the right. He did, did materialize and eventually, you know, we kind of sailed up, rounded the weather mark in 16th or 15th and aggressively not front. But, but you know, we're like, you know, after that first race, you know, where we were blindingly fast. I mean, we just faster and faster. And I'm like, well, you know, if you're not, I mean, actually on Friday, even if you're not 100 yards ahead, I don't. I don't want to tell you, okay, I'm overblowing it, but we must make ourselves have some fun. And you got to laugh, you know. And so we rounded the mark, went down, just ripping, ripping downwind. And, you know, we, we jive little, you know. And when we jive very smooth and even kind of went down the face of a wave and started timing the, the drop, chase the wave into the jive, you know, you kind of, instead of, in the moments where you're going to hop up and blast, instead it's like, okay, jiving. And then we would go down and just trace right down the wave. And, you know, and when I turn it's really it's a gentle turn i don't want to feel the go uh, and stop you know you want to feel it you want to feel it because if you're not super technical you want to feel that the boat traces you know through the jive and i mean you have to watch it on a video and then you know trace and then snap and then i was like great jive that's the best jive yet and she's just like oh and then you just smoke it, and the next thing you know, we're flow. in third place. You don't want to yeah. work against the flow. You right. Work with yeah, you're always... It is um, a lot easier to jibe when you are going fast. Yeah, you're going fast, and the helm is neutral, because you notice if you heal hard, you're like, Ugh. like when we T-boned some, we hit somebody, that was a low point. And but, um, and then we did a 360. It was a bad So race. talk to me about, um, I know we but, noticed that you seem to go, uh, you, t you tended to uh, set, run a while, and then jibe. Almost every time you'd go maybe a third of the way, probably a third of the way down, and then jive to port. Yep. Um, what was your thinking about, you know, how were you making your decision about when to jive? Um, were you always doing it because of a shift, or were you doing it because of, of tactics versus the rest of the fleet? Talk was... me through why you, why you did your decisions downwind. Yeah. So moving from back of the boat forward again in the decision making hierarchy now we're quite quite specific because in just as an aside first is that abby's trimming downwind and uh, sometimes a couple times i was like don't look curl you know only because your past boats is in the last hundred feet every time and you've got to come in super hot people drive down as a side note it's lured mark and you lose a ton of boats doing that stuff you know the boats take a lot to get on step so to your point set max lopez you know told me something he's like you know dude set go straight you think you're on the ley line, go some more, you know, and we want to just get going, rip, you know, go ripping, you know, boat handling tactics is boat speed first, fast through the water is number one, then tactics gets a lot easier, says, you know, we're not a bit of doing boneheaded stuff as I am want to do, but yeah, that was the whole, the real specific was, okay, we're going to set and go straight, and then, and then, um, and then at some point, you're like, I think we want to jive, or you're like, should we jive, and I'm like, hold on, or are just, you know, waiting for a puff. You know, you jive into pressure and, and, and uh, open open air. You so know? number one is you're, you're, you see pressure, you see a, yes. a, a line of breeze you want to follow. Yeah. But don't, yeah, yeah, setting, going straight, gets you up on the plane and it's simple and gets you going. And then and then once you go in and jive, I mean, a jive set sometimes, I mean, we, we did a jive set. I mean, it wasn't the greatest. We had to practice it. 
But I mean, you could jive set just fine, but if it's a huge fleet of boats, it's under a wall. So you have to get going straight, you know, and these boats, they plane and they, they, the angles are like this, which is why they're so fun. The downwind legs last so long. So step yeah, so, one is you're trying to clear the offset. You're trying yep. to um, get away from the, fl the fleet yes. coming across Correct. the top marks. And then yeah, once you're cool. on your lines, you're yep. moving fast, then you make a decision, okay, you got it. if I jive out, then I want to make sure I'm jiving out in air, Yeah. make a nice smooth jive. And the decision is, there's very little to the decisioning. We don't have much going on in our heads at all. Quiet mind is a very important. That, um, Talk that, to that yeah, quiet mind. The quiet mind happens when you trust, you know, when, when, but the trust is earned, you know, you don't just, you know, you have to have somebody that has the right mindset, that isn't here for the glory. That's here to focus and not one, not there to be seen, but is there to just understand the beauty of the simplicity. You know that we're gonna set and go straight. You know, not like we're gonna set and you know take the shift and although that's fun to talk about, but I mean it's like. But the real mark of a serious sailor is when you downplay, and that's really you know you know the simplicity. So I can focus and drive. The head stays off the swivel. You know her head's on the swivel, and um, we just get ripping. And she's like, I think I want to jive, and I'm going like that. You know, and I snapshot and look again kind of driving and just look again and then I'm like okay you want to jive she's like I think we should jive and I look and I'm like all right jiving and then you know okay let's go ahead and then you know then we just nice smooth and then my head my face focuses on the jive where you know it's the same body motion so that I don't have to think trace through the jive and pop and then and well I think what you did was you would then throw your body way out and pump and it by throwing the body over we were really far back too and I remember just kind of holding my tiller and looking at my body posture. Like I feel my fist here. Like I'm not really thinking technically much. I'm looking for the puff. That's it, downhill. And you know, but you, the, ideally, if all things considered, if nothing changes by yourself strategically, you just want to go straight because jiving is slow. If, you're, if you jive, it takes a couple seconds to jive. And it's a very long three seconds for me. And as if you're in three seconds, off the step can be 50 yards. We don't slow down. Everyone else, you know, because of dinghy sailing, you know, because college sailing, URI. And, you know, we don't ever slow down. So, and we don't hit waves. So that has everything, that has everything. That's the real reason we got so far forward. It's not because we're, we're already faster anyway, but we're sailing 265, so we're light. But I mean, it's really, it's just to make the point is just, you know, we just jive, look for the puff, and you don't want to drive in the lull. If you do have the lull, it's like, wait, speed up and just get ripping. And I swear to God, when we would get a puff, the bow we would be going like this and then it would be what straight down it'd be you know you get the puff you know a little van you know and then hike way out ease 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 kite drive down you know and just don't be afraid to just really work the tiller hard to just keep the keep the nose up and an angle of heel that's with the horizon like I, i'll look at the the vaccaros to think i think that's the right one like i look at the number look at this i'm watching the horizon see what's whatever the data in your line of sight very simple thinking so you yeah. want your bow basically on the horizon. You're trying to keep your bow that high yep. because you can also have it too high and you're dragging yeah. the stern. So that you think that yeah. is the right angle to keep your. Well, you have there's dragging the stern, and then there's the fact on Friday when you're going into the waves, and if you want to wave hop, you have to head up, which makes you heel. That's why you open the vang up so you can do that. I started playing the vang, and I'm like bang on. She's just like, I'm like I don't guess I'm doing that then. That's cool, you know, but I mean, but it's like, um, but just to finish, uh, sorry, to finish the, the point, it's, um, yeah, just to, uh, you know, to be able to, to head up and then just kind of, uh, with the horizon, you know, it's because that's nature's lever gauge, you know, GPS is two second delays, the Picaros is a normal instrument, it's very high refresh rate, but we're working off of GPS, you know, and there's a lot of tide, but the fundamental, most reliable thing, angle of heel, is the way you drive up wind, and you want to see that. According to the Atlas, I thought that was five, that's actually 11. I'll even take the Atlas and put it on my boat and just do this stuff. The thing is so responsive that you can kind of walk around, you know, and you want to train the glance, you know, because numbers, because generally from a business analytics standpoint, numbers confirms intuition, and I want to create the intuition. And that's, you know, that's what this is. So you really literally want to see like that. That's the horizon, you know, and here's your boat, you want to see like that. That's too much, that's a bit flat, you know, head up, as you head up, it does. As you head up, it does that. As you head down, you just want to yeah. get used to seeing that. Yeah. What about you? So, um, basically, final thoughts uh, on what do you think that uh, uh, your your one parting thought would be about the teamwork, or not not that you are a team, but rather that what worked 
and what you'll carry forward with you as you go and compete in other events? Um, I think that the main thing for me is when I get in a new boat, I ask a lot of questions. I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. how that boat works, and I know... Like, a lot of the time, if I'm hopping in a new boat, it's to sail with a crew that has been in that boat for a while. So I'm asking a lot of questions, and you can speak to this, I'm what sure. What kind of questions? Um, just like, what do you think of this? Or, like, what do you normally do with the jib cars? And what do you normally do for, like, jib trim and, um, like, all the different sail controls? Like, just trying to figure out what is typical for making that boat go Probing fast. questions. Exactly. Yeah, you're probing. I'm trying to figure yeah. out what is normal and what is like what they're used to about that boat and I think a lot of the time that comes across as me not being or like a lot of people take that as like I'm not a confident sailor and I don't right. like I don't know what I'm talking about but it's not that I don't know what I'm talking about I just don't know the boat so um to me it actually sounds like a language translator if you're used to sailing a yes. 29 or yeah and you're getting an Amalgam's 15 you're asking these questions to try to to put your okay i see how there's a di how there are differences and i see how there are similarities exactly and yeah in that way in your head if you find yourself doing a behavior you would do in a different type of, of boat then you go okay in this one i need to modify my thinking or it reinforces i do it the same way i would do it in my other other boat exactly yeah so a lot and like yeah. a lot of the time i'll get in a boat and i'll do that and some of the sailors in that boat see that as me not being confident or me not knowing what I'm doing. But the second they just answer the questions and I'm able to figure out the boat, they're like, oh, like she was doing it to figure out the boat. She wasn't doing it to figure out how to sail. Yeah. So don't be afraid to ask questions is my big thing. Like They might take it as you don't know how to sail, but it will improve your sailing regardless. And if you can understand the boat better, you can sail the boat better. So my big thing is just keep asking questions even if you think it'll make you look less both, confident. Both, both keep asking mm -hmm. questions because if you're not learning, you're not improving. Well, ask the right questions too. And yeah. then the second side is if, if you're the one getting asked the question, be receptive and understand that the reason you're being asked the question might actually be to help you. Yeah. Right? To mm. help, help the yeah. other crew member to communicate well with with you because you've done this language translator that says, okay, here's how we speak Melgus 15 versus whatever other. Right, great one. Now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put that back towards the quiet mind because it's, I also kept you away from unnecessary questions. You know, like how does it work? You know, I don't, we didn't wanna worry about, we're not trying to learn how to sail. I've had it for 35 years. Mm -hmm. it takes a long time, it's applied physics. You know, like you're basically an aeronautical engineer. Like, don't ask the wrong questions. You know, and it's it made it got me what do thinking. You mean by wrong? The wrong questions, like you know, how does the foil flow over the blades work, and how do I you know set the numbers and all right. the stuff. And it's like that stuff is builds on intuition, which is classic use of data analytics world. Like, so that I was a former solution architect and based business analytics. But it's like you hone in if you're good at asking some of the right questions. I try to also. You're really good at. I was like. Just, you know, that's not entirely what you need to be asking because Abby's such an elite sailor. She's like, okay, I understand why that's not an important question to ask. You want to be the one that, that can get, the, get, the, get it to happen. And as Abby knows as a coach, as a junior coach, that you do the three, five, seven because you want a lot of repetition. Because if you, by sailing by sight, makes the maneuver go well. Because, you know, when you're sailing, you see it and you feel it. And in college sailing, I learned that you, you, you know, you keep it simple. You just wait until you witness the jib backwind and then you tack. So that's how we hone our moves is like, how, when do we tack? I'm like, backwind, then count to one, 1,000. As opposed to worrying about the fact that it's like, you know, about like, you know, the details of the, of the hull, depending upon, you know, it depends on the levels. Like you have to first get to the feel piece. And we're now over this, this we broke this plateau. So now it's time to start talking about data and precision for, for, uh, for a repetition, but you have to, have that feel so along to sum it all back up it's like you want to really make sure that you ask the questions that help you sail the best and it was really something I did here you know it was really good that I can hear you and Joe talk and I think it's just a big big part of Mix Plus too is really that there's a lot of good sailors um, uh, Jillian she's a girl that Jillian sailed Adelaide, on yeah. uh, the J70 with us in she November. was on our Mix Plus team and watching them kind of you know okay I'm on puffs you're on you're on relatives you know and that they they know, you know, 
what questions to ask and you know to stay away from the overly technical stuff because in sailing there's a flattening of the hierarchy where everybody commonly knows their place and that of you you know the person that knows their place the best establishes a prominence you know and if everybody similarly has that in common then there's no more you know I'm above or below you you know and so that's kind of where we flatten out and start to synergize and I noticed that you got in the next day you got a lot more adamant once you saw that I you know you were the, the, the evidence you know it's like the proof is in the pudding it has to happen you know you have to get better you can't it's not just listen it's not about being mean it's about knowing that being able to see it happen you know it's verifiable that it is it did happen well one thing I yeah. can verify is I've been sailing for like 55 years and I'm not going to call expertise on anybody isn't that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that no, how I'm always quickly, learning. How quickly exactly. people I'm get better? I'm always learning. I don't care how many years I've got in. Yeah. The bottom line is I'm learning from people every day, and that's the amazing thing about this experience, especially yeah. what you're doing, jumping on a boat with somebody else. You're picking up new ideas, and some of them you'll use, some of them you won't use, but you're always learning. And so I think that's a fabulous thing, and it's awesome to speak with uh, both of you about, you know, congratulations, second Thank place you. in this big event. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fun. You both walk away with huge smiles on your faces. <laughs> we did, yeah. It's not just trophies. It's that, that the trophy is the yeah. learning and the, and the fun and, yeah. you know, yeah. that moment where you go, wow, whether it's about a sea turtle, which is also an amazing thing, right? Yeah. You're out sailing and you get to